In this lecture, I'm going to go into a bit more about continuous spectra. Continuous spectra are very useful to us in astronomy because they provide two different ways for us to understand stellar temperature. And temperature is obviously something we would like to know about objects in space. We would just like to know how hot is the sun, or how hot is Jupiter, or anything like that. And continuous spectra give us a way to do that. When we talk about continuous spectra, as you'll have seen from the activity that we're doing in class, we're often going to be talking about what are called black bodies. That's a weird name for these things, but black bodies you can just think of as they are hot, dense objects. Hot just means they're fairly warm. That doesn't have to mean like as hot as the sun. Your body is a pretty decent black body as it happens. And it's gotta be dense. Now, the sun, even though it's made of gas, is still dense. There's still a lot of density in the sun. We can actually even calculate that. It turns out to be pretty big. Um, so a black body is a hot, dense object. And all of the continuous spectra produced by black bodies have the same basic shape. They sort of start over here on the left at low wavelength. They go up to a peak, and then they come back down and sort of gradually trail off. It's not a symmetric graph. Um, so the right side does not look the same as the left side. This is not a perfect bell curve. Um, but you do sort of have this particular shape. And this was just someone that I kind of randomly put into the simulator that we're using in the class activity. But you can see on here, this is kind of the range of visible light. Over here would be ultraviolet. Over here would be infrared. And you'll have noticed that I marked right here on the x-axis, somewhere a little bit less than 200. This wavelength right here is the wavelength that corresponds to this peak, this high point. And we call this the wavelength of peak intensity, and mathematically we're going to call it lambda max. That doesn't mean it's the biggest wavelength. It also doesn't tell you anything about how high it goes on the y-axis. It just says that this is the wavelength where the highest point occurs. This is the, lambda max is the wavelength where the highest point occurs. And there's a very famous relationship between that wavelength and the temperature. Now, before I show you that, it's useful to think about some stuff sort of from everyday life. And if I say, which is hotter, something that's red or something that's blue? Your first guess might be to say that the red thing is hotter. We usually use red to indicate hot water and blue to indicate cold water, stuff like that. But if you think about a fire, like a candle flame, if I set a candle on fire, and you look really closely at the flame, you know that in close to the wick, it's blue, and further out, it's sort of red, orange, that kind of color. And you may or may not have ever played with this. I don't suggest trying this at home, but some people do this. You can actually run your fingers through some of the red and orange part, but you wouldn't want to touch that hot blue part down at the middle. The blue is actually what's hotter. If you have a gas stove, the flame is blue. It's very, very hot. Blue is hotter than red. And that's going to be a consequence of something about these continuous spectra and the peak wavelength, of the lambda max. Here's sort of approximation spectra for several different stars plus a human being down here. And what you will notice when you start comparing these is that the hottest star has a peak wavelength. The value on the x-axis where the peak happens for this one is kind of in the ultraviolet at a short wavelength. For the sun, the middle one, the peak is right here in the middle of visible light. For an even cooler star, the peak is at now in the infrared, and a human is even further into the infrared. The cooler you get, the more that peak wavelength shifts over to the right, the redder that peak wavelength is. And this gives us something called Wien's Law. W-I-E-N is pronounced Wien, it's German. And it's a relationship between temperature and color. And 
The non-mathematical way to say it is what I just said about the fire. Red is cooler, blue is hotter. And you can also express that as saying the hotter the star, remember this one's the hot one, the shorter its wavelength. So this one's at 100, a cooler star has its peak over here at about 600, an even cooler one over here bigger than 1,000. There's a mathematical relationship that governs this. And it's given by this equation. The peak wavelength is equal to a constant, 2.9 times 10 to the sixth, divided by the temperature. You're going to have to know what the units are here. This is very, very important that you use the correct units. The peak wavelength must be in nanometers and the temperature must be in Kelvin. You're not going to have any problem with the temperature being in Kelvin, but you need to make sure when you're doing a problem that the peak wavelength is always in nanometers. We'll do an example of that in a minute. There's another relationship that you've probably discovered in the in-class activity that you're doing. What we did was we had it color in what it was what it called the area under the curve. Those of you who are in calculus know why the area under the curve is important. But what it is is it's just shading in all of this area between the line and the x-axis. And it sort of tails off here. I didn't show all the as high as it can possibly go in the wavelength. But what that tells me is the total amount of light given off by each square meter of the star's surface. So if I take the star and I split it up into square meters, that's like nine of our tiles on the floor in the science building. If I split it up into square meters, then this tells me how much light at every single wavelength I get off at each wavelength. This is called the power per square meter. You think of power as like the number of watts, like if you have a 100 watt light bulb, that is its power, and if you were to divide that by the surface area of the light bulb, that would be its power per square meter. How much light or how much energy is being given off by each square meter every second. And there is a relationship between the temperature and this area under the curve again. Another thing you notice when you look at this sort of comparison one from your book is that the blue one is always higher than the yellow one. The yellow one is always higher than the red one. The red one's always higher than the black one. A hotter star gives off more light at every single wavelength than a cooler star does. It also gives off a greater power per square meter. Hotter stars are going to be brighter stars than cool stars. The equation for that, there's not really a symbol for the power per square meter, so I'm just writing out power per square meter. That's equal to a constant times the temperature to the fourth power. This constant has a value of 5.7 times 10 to the negative eighth. It's named the Stefan Boltzmann constant for Mr. Stefan, who was one of the people who came up with this. And that's the Greek letter sigma. It looks like an O with a little horizontal thing off the top of it. The units for this one will be pretty straightforward. We'll have watts per square meter for the power per square meter, and the temperature will need to be in Kelvin again. So I want to try an example problem real quick. This is number 18 in your packet. And I'm going to take that 3,000 degree object that we were looking at in the red line in those example curves. We're going to figure out its power per square meter, and we're going to figure out its wavelength of peak intensity. We're going to figure out lambda max. So the power per square meter is given by the Stefan Boltzmann law, sigma t to the fourth. Sigma is 5.7 times 10 to the negative eighth. And then I'm going to do the temperature to the fourth power. It's a very, very strong temperature dependence. And that comes out to be a pretty big number, 4.6 times 10 to the sixth watts per square meter. So again, think about your typical light bulbs that are maybe 100 watts. And this is 4 million 
watts in just one square meter of every, um, every part of the star. And the star, of course, is huge. We're even going to learn that many 3,000 degree stars are especially huge, and it's giving off this much light in every single square meter of its surface. It asks the wavelength of peak intensity, when it says wavelength of peak intensity, that's lambda max. I'm just going to plug in the temperature. And we get about 967 nanometers. If you compare this to where the peak was in those little example spectra in the previous slides, you'll see that's pretty close to 967. So this is very typical.